A bit slice circuit is a combinational logic circuit that divides the computation of multiple bits into a series of single bit slices. We pass information from one bit slice to the next in order to remember what happened in one bit slice, and then we'll perform some output logic usually to be able to summarize what the circuit computed. We can alternatively redesign the circuit to be sequential in nature where we have the same computational bit slice, but rather than passing it from one bit slice to the next, we store the value inside a set of flip-flops and then send that data back around into the bit slice again. And we'll set, um, we might perform some other additional computations on it, either as part of an output logic or storing some per slice outputs, such as the sum bits from an addition operation. So let's talk about how we convert a, a Compa combinational comparator that's bit sliced in design and design a serial sequential comparator using a bit serial design. So to, to begin to understand this, let's pretend we have a 4-bit register that's currently storing the values of 9 and 10 and we want to find out is A greater than, so the top one is A and the bottom one is B, is A greater than, equal to, or less than B. So we want to start off with the assumption that A is equal to B, and we're going to store that as our initial starting state. <coughs> then what we're going to do is our bit serial design, our bit slice, is going to assume, okay, A is equal to B, and then it's going to compare the most significant bits of A and B to make a decision is now, do we now know that A is greater than, equal to, or less than B? Since the bits of A and B are the same, we know that the next state is still going to be that A is equal to B, all, from all we've seen from the most significant bit. What's going to happen now is we're going to do a circular shift so that um, all the data moves along. And what you'll see is now that what was the most significant bit is now the least significant bit spot. And now we have a new set of most significant bits. Our previous next state, which was equals, is now our current state. So we still, we still are basing the assumption that A is equal to B. And then we're putting the two zeros from these down here into the comparator. And then if we, the assumption is A is equal to B and the two bits of A and B are the same, our next state is going to be that A is still equal to B. We get another circular shift. So now we've moved these two along and now we have zero in A and one into B. And so if we assume that A is equal to B initially, now we see that B is greater than a, or so A is less than B, is going to be our next state. Our next state becomes our current state. And now we know that A is less than B for the most, more significant bits, so when we compare the least significant bits, our next state is still going to be less than. A is less than B. So that's the general function of our comparator circuit. And <coughs> What we want to do then is design a, se a sequential logic circuit that actually implements this behavior. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have three states, one for when A is equal to B, A is greater than B, when A is less than B, and we're going to code that information with a set of bits. So zero, zero is A is equal to B, A is greater than B, A is less than B. So this is going to be our starting state. We're going to start off with the assumption that A is equal to B. And as we saw earlier, if we get either an input of 0, 0, or 1, 1 for A sub i and B sub i, we're going to stay in that state. If we get um, the input 1, 0, we are now going to be able to store the information that A is greater than B. And if we get the input sequence 0, 1, we're going to move to a state that records that A is less than B. And as long as we are in the A is greater than B state, we're going to stay there. So it doesn't matter which input combination we use, it'll stay there. And in the same way, using a different notation, we can just say we don't care what the input is when we're in the A is less than B state. We're going to stay in that state. And <coughs> what we're going to do is also send an output for each of these states. And so what we want to send to, to, to the next state is that we are still storing a is equal to B, A is greater than B, A is less than B. And we'll create a little key, Q1, Q0, and we're going to have our comparator bits, C1, comparator bit C0, being sent out of our circuit. 
Okay, and that's the design. We can show you a nice cleaned up version. Uh, that shows everything. Okay, so now the question becomes, how does this actually work? Well, the great thing is that this circuit here, or the state machine, can be implemented with the comparator bit slice that we've had before. So the same one that we use in the combinational logic circuit, we can just plop that in front of our flip-flops, and we're just going to store one set of bits into each of these as our as the way that we can update the state stored in our flip-flops. So these guys are storing um, these guys are storing our current state, and then the D plus D input D is our Q plus, that's our next state. And so the only question now that we have to figure out is what do we do for that first comparison? How do we reset the counter into our start state? So what we're going to have here is this, circ this F input, and we're going to create some control circuitry here that determines how we restart the system into our start state where A is equal to B. So let's look at a, uh, a truth table, and we'll think about how that how we're going to make this work. So when we know that um, when it's zero zero, they're saying that a is equal to b. That's our system. So whenever our first input is one, we want to reset our system back into into the a is equal to b state. So we're going to put 0, 0 for each of these whenever we have a start state. And what we want to do for all these other ones is when f is 0, we want to keep our current state because we don't want to overwrite that. So these guys are all going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And we can now try to derive a Boolean expression for each of these. And so we can see that here we've got c1 out is equal to f bar c1 in and we have c0 out is equal to f bar c0 out oh, c0 in rather and we can do something just a quick little transformation if we want to do this with an only a NAND or only a NOR gate we can put a double complement on this guy, each of these, and then do our de Morgan's law, so that becomes F or C1 in complement, and that is equal to F, and I need a prime there, F or C0 in complement. So now we have complement there. So now we have two Boolean expressions, and the nice thing is that we can get this C1 in from our flip-flop, and we can get this guy also from our flip-flop. And what we can do is just simply connect these around and put that into our NOR gate. And so there we get our complement, our C0 in. And this is our C1 in complement in complement. And that's how we design our circuit. And so now anytime we tell it, hey, this is the first, comp first comparison, we know that this is going to output input a 0, 0, so that we can assume that A is equal to B. And after that, it's going to be equal to this, the states of our flip-flops. So this is going to be Q1 and Q0.